this is uh this is weird I normally don't do videos like this um okay hello <laughs> I am in front of a suitcase I'm packing my whole apartment in disarray um because there's moving boxes everywhere because I'm moving so um it's a long story and I figured you know, I got packing to do, you need a story, let's just go there, right? <laughs> That's what I figured. You might also hear some other noises. I feel like either they're prepping the apartment below mine for somebody to move in or somebody's moving in. I don't know. Hello folks. So I moved into this apartment that I'm currently in may of last year after i got me another job if you've been following any of my videos you know that in the year before last which was in 2020 so 2020 um in november i got laid off from my job and then i kind of took some time got another job so i got this job may of last year and uh, things have been going fine. They're going good. Nothing to complain about there. But um, this year, my lease was up in November for this apartment. I had moved into, I got a little crazy, right? So I ended up moving into a two bedroom apartment, two bedroom, two bath apartment. And um, I was like, because I can afford it. That's <laughs> and not only that i thought having i thought now i can afford to have an actual space for my office like an actual office space that i could close the door to and all that other good stuff which was very important to me and it still is like it is honestly if i had to go back and do it all over again i don't know if i would necessarily get this apartment um because it also, in addition to the two bedrooms, it also has a very nice balcony that wraps around. It's very large, very large enough for my plants. Um, so I love that aspect of it. Um, but I don't know. They also had like a one bedroom that had like a dining room area that I could have also used for my office. But then the problem is it's still open to everything and I wanted something a little bit more closed off. So. Knowing what I know now and what I'm about to tell you, I would say I'd probably just stick with the smaller space and have the dining room as my office um, and then kind of maneuver that and so I could save more money. So where I'm at now is that I tr attempted, this was, well, I want to say it was the end of August or was it the end of September? It was the end of September that I tried to then say, well, let's just say it was September <laughs> that I tried to say, okay, I'm going to be having to move soon. Um, my lease is up in the end of November. Let me see if I can get a house. So I ended up, you know, going uh, with the motions of, of that situation. Um, I used the same realtor my sister used five years prior when she bought her home. And so I reached out to her. She got me connected with a lender that she had worked with in the past. So I was like, okay, bet. Called that guy. And he goes, hey, you definitely qualify for down payment assistance. Um, and we can get you set up with that. Um, you know, just look for, look for homes. And then we'll kind of go from there, whatever. So I got pre-approved. And... Um, I went ahead and was like, okay, I got my pre-approval. Let's go look for homes. I had a budget of $350,000. I also live in Texas for anybody who doesn't know that. So I live in Texas. Uh, I live in Texas and um, I was approved for, th I only wanted $350,000. I was very adamant about this number because in my mind, I could afford $350,000. Anything more than that, I was a little rocky about. Well, as I kind of went through the process, I was looking at homes, 
Um, I wasn't really looking, I, I wasn't really finding anything that, I was, that, that really jumped out at me. I feel like everything that I saw was like needing a lot of work. It was just, I don't know. To me, it just, it screamed, OMG, I don't want to do this. <laughs> In that price range, I should say. So, what I ended up doing is, I, I searched for homes for a few weeks, I feel like. It was exhausting. Oh my gosh. So, to those of you who have a significant other that you that you are going to do the home buying process with bless you god bless you um because i i was doing everything on my own and it was just so stressful and some of the showings i went to go see by myself other showings my uh some of my family members were able to come with me either a sister or my brother his wife or my mom um, my dad didn't come with any, <laughs> come to me for any showings. Um, and a lot of that was just like, I got to the point where it, things took a turn. So dad never came with me because there wasn't a purpose at that point. I think dad was more interested in seeing like, Hey, let me know when you've, when you've picked one and you're going to go see it again. Right. <laughs> so I was like, I think that was more where he wanted to come in into play. Um, for those who, well, y'all probably don't know this about my parents, but my parents, um, I'm getting a little off topic here, but, um, my parents own, they, well, I guess they still own a home remodeling company. And so when I grew up, that's what they did. They had their own business. They, um, worked in different people's homes. They fixed things. They painted things. They did the whole nine. And if it was something they couldn't do, they outsourced it to somebody who who they knew would do a very good job doing it. So um, I was pretty much used to that. So this is where my parents coming to see properties was important because I knew that they had an eye for things that I didn't have. I didn't know about. So anyways, so I went looking for homes. I finally said, you know what? Can I find a new home, like a brand new home? Like, can I get one of those? <laughs> So I was supposed to try to figure out. So I went, and if you want a new home, I will say this. If you want a new home, you're going to have to go a little further out of the city to go get it. So I don't, I, I don't live in the Dallas, Texas proper area. I live in Dallas County, but I don't live, I live in the suburbs. And that's where I like it, you know. But if you want a house, um that is a little you know less expensive but still have a good amount of space you might have to go a little bit of on the outskirts and so I, I went to go and visit a home a little bit outside of the suburbs um and so about 20 minutes or so from like the suburbs area so I went out there and I liked the home so I saw two models like the home I was like oh this is nice could this be my home like can I live here and they're like yeah you can live here if, you know let's do the paperwork so I went through the process of doing the paperwork and like that Friday I had to fill out hey this is your home I was like cool and they of course with them still they the house that I wanted was already built all they needed to do was finish putting the cosmetic things on the inside of the house so that was it. And then cleaning it up so that people can actually live there. That's it. And so um, that's all that needed to happen. They were still building a handful of homes in the whole um, area, but the one that I wanted was done except for cosmetic things. So I went ahead and was like, okay, cool. Uh, you know, let's sign the paperwork. They said, listen, we are working uh, with the uh, mortgage company and if they if you work with them too then you can get incentives to buy this home for instance they were offering I think it was six thousand dollars in closing costs and they were so and they were also helping with down payment assistance which I needed the down payment assistance I had no money saved except for 
maybe, let's see, about $5,000 maybe saved up. But most of that was like, let's just say it was between four and $5,000 I had that I could quickly get a hold to. Um, and I, I had to send them $3,500 of earnest money to hold the house. So I did all that on Friday night. I went and sent them the earnest money to hold the house and all that good stuff. So <clears throat> once I did that, I was like, is this really happening? Like, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I've been searching for like a month or so, and I was just like, yeah, I don't know. I was still a bit sketchy, not gonna lie. Um, I'm sketchy about a lot of things, but I was still a bit sketchy. I was like, I don't know if this is really a thing. Um, so the Saturday rolls around, and my sisters had not seen the home. The home. My, uh, so they came over here, and we went to go see the house. So I went over there, I showed them the home, and. They were like, wow, you bought a house. I was like, I know, right? And then uh, they had left. And then at this point, it's, I don't know, I want to say it's about four or something in the afternoon. So I get a call from the lenders. And they're like, you know, hello. Like, we want to talk to you about, you know, the mortgage lending stuff. I was like, okay, fine. So they ended up telling me that... I needed an additional $7,000 in order to get the house. And I was like, okay, I don't have $7,000. And they were like, well, do you have somebody you can get it from? I was like, lady, like, no, I am the person that my family gets things from. And it's, I'm not bragging at all. I'm just saying like, if my family needs my help financially, I'm the one who's like, hey, I can help you, right? It's, it's not the other way around, you see? So I was like, no, I do not have anybody who could just gift me money. Like, also, who's gifting money? Like, who in the world? <laughs> I said to myself, who gifts money? I never get gifted money. No one gives me money. Like, oh yeah, here's a thousand bucks, Tiffany. No one does that. I was like, people do that in this world? I don't get it. So anyways, I was like, no, there's no one like that. They're like, well, you're not gonna be able to get the house because you don't qualify for down payment assistance because you make too much money. And I said to myself, what? That is not what the other lender told me. Keep in mind, there was another lender that I talked to way in the beginning. He told me I qualify for down payment assistance. These people are saying I don't qualify. So I'm like, what in the world? And he, you know, they were like, yeah, no, but like, I'm not the person that you can talk more about this with. I'm just helping out with your stuff for today. But for now, you're good. Let me, you know, just kind of leave this to the person in charge of your account specifically. And he'll get back to you on Monday. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. So at that point, I'm like, the house is gone. It's not mine. We're done here. So I was over it. So I tell my real estate agent like everything that's going on. She was like, what? Like she's confused. I was like, girl, I don't know. Like this is what they told me. I don't know. I, I'm over it. Uh, at this point, I'm like, I'm done. We're finished with this. So then um, over the next couple of days, well, the following day, the the representative from the, the building company, the lady who showed me the, the house to begin with, she sends me over paperwork to change lenders because remember I had one lender they wanted to use the builders lender so there's paperwork involved in doing that so she sent that over and I'm like girl I'm not signing that because your people called me yesterday and they said no so I'm not signing that so I didn't sign that paperwork it's very important that you pay attention to what you're signing so I'm one of those people who are like I'm not signing nothing until you tell me what it is and I already knew what that was I was like why would I why would I do that I'm not doing that so I didn't do it and so then, um, they ended up, you know, Monday rolls around. Monday afternoon, the guy calls me from the, the lending agency, the builder's lender, calls me. Congratulations on your new home. I said, he does not have a clue of what's going on. I was like, where's the communication with your team? Like, what in the actual hell? I'm upset because you're congratulating me but there's no congratulations in order because y'all told me I needed $7,000 and I don't have nowhere to get it and 
I did not have that in my 401k because I hadn't been there long enough to actually accumulate that much money. So I was like, it's not there. And I'm not pulling it out of somewhere else because I need that money in case I have an emergency. Remember, I depend on myself. So there is no one else. There's me and then there's me and that's it. So I was like, yeah, it's, it's a no. So anyways, this guy, I tell him what I was told you know on Saturday he's like oh okay well let me get with my colleague whatever and my co-worker whatever he said and I will you know get back to you and I was like okay fine whatever dude I already knew the answer by the way like I already knew I wasn't gonna get the house I think of this as like just a big learning lesson so literally he called me back like an hour later and I know it was not good because he took too long to call me back but anyways, he's like, well, unfortunately, we can't really do anything because you don't have the money. Is there anybody who can give you the money? No! Why do y'all keep asking me these dumb questions? Also, who is going around giving people like $4,000? And where are they? Like, I need them. Like, where are these people at? So I was like, this is weird. So um, he's like, no, okay, well, sorry, you can't get the house. I was like, well, yeah, okay, thanks, bye. How do I get my money back? He's like, that has to do with you know that we don't have it it somebody else has it. I was like fine I'll make sure that my, you know I get it back so I told my real estate agent what's going on I've been keeping her up to date in this whole process she was amazing by the way so she calls the builder lady and talks to her and communicates through her through an email and whatever else she's like listen uh, she needs her money back <laughs> thank you thank you for this I don't know what I would have done without her in this situation because I literally had no one else to lean on through this whole process except for her um so i definitely appreciate her with that going through all the motions of getting my money back and just staying on top of it i thank you for that um so anyways the first lender then calls me the following day so at this point it's tuesday okay he calls me he's like tiffany what's going on i heard a, i had a purchase order and then it was retracted what's going on i was like listen dude um here's what's going on so i tell him the stuff he's like listen you do qualify for down payment assistance i don't know why they told you you don't um and he sent me over the numbers for texas he's like this is what you need you're below that and you can get down payment assistance i don't know the only thing i could think of why they don't want you to have it is because they don't want to go through the paperwork and i was like are you kidding me and i said to myself i guess there is paperwork so there was definitely paperwork and it was I guess it was like yo they didn't want to do it anyways so they tell me uh, this guy tells me I can qualify for down payment assistance he tells me I can you know get the money I need whatever and I was like okay if I do that how much are the monthly costs for the mortgage and everything that get, goes to a mortgage because it's not just mortgage right You've got your mortgage, you've got your your uh, mortgage insurance, which if you put less than 20% down on a home, you then have to pay mortgage insurance until you pay for 20% of the home. There's also um, just insurance that you need for the home as well. Um, and then there's taxes. So taxes are a big thing. You They, they go into account you know every month and then at the end of the year you pay your taxes so it's important that you have you it's not just one thing it's not like you know rent you know and then in addition to all of that you still have to pay your utility bills of course and that's totally separate from this so he tells me that the lowest it would be is thirty two hundred dollars a month now I can't do that financially. Like that does not make me comfortable paying $32,000 for all four of those things and it does not even include utilities or doesn't even include saving anything for maintenance stuff. It includes none of that. I was like, I can't do that. Like financially it doesn't make sense. I had a number in mind cause I've been going through, I had used probably three different calculation sheets to try to figure out how much home I could afford and uh, 3200 wasn't it 
so it was more like 2400 you know which would have been fine um so he's like well you could just look for a house that's three that three hundred thousand dollars i said to myself have you seen the homes that are three hundred thousand dollars sir you're playing in my face okay so we're not gonna do it's playing to play tiffany's face so i was like yeah i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna save some money and i'll just try again another year or something he's like well you do know interest rates are gonna go up this house is not gonna be the same house price as it is now i said that is a risk i'm willing to take i don't care furthermore why are you trying to push me into a home i can't afford that's weird like <laughs> doing that are you crazy you mean to tell me what i told him when he told me thirty two hundred dollars i said so you so i'm not gonna have lights like you, you know what i'm saying like something's not gonna get paid and i can see it and that stresses me out i'm a person i pay my bills on time i don't want no problems from nobody uh and so i don't like the uncertainty of not knowing how I'm going to pay my bills. That is a terrifying thing t to me and that is not something I'm going to put myself into knowing that I can't pay for it in the beginning. That's silly to me, so I'm not doing that. So I said, you know what, forget about it. The whole thing's off, we're not doing it. Thank you for your time, blah, blah, blah. We're done here. So I, it, I made, this brings me to today and I'm packing. I made the very difficult decision to move back home with my parents. And I have to admit that that is a tough pill to swallow. It honestly was a tough decision. I tried looking for other apartments that were maybe smaller. They didn't make any sense financially still because I'm able to save a significant amount of money living at home with my parents. Um, but yeah, that's the situation now is I have to move back home. And um, I've been having mixed emotions about it, but this video is long enough and I will talk about it in another video shortly. So, but yeah, that's where we're at right now. Um, and I've, I don't know, I'll see you in the next video. Like, <laughs> Hopefully you learned to save your money early, I guess. I really wasn't planning on buying a home anytime soon but I kind of just came up with a random decision a few months ago that was like can I do this and um I went off of what other people were saying and I you know later on I was like yeah you know just trust your gut trust your feeling and this whole process because at the end of the day you're gonna get stuck paying for the whole house da -da -da. so anyways thank you for listening i don't know if this is going to help you i don't know if it's going to hurt you i don't know if it's going to affect you at all i don't know hopefully you learned something i don't know see you in the next one <laughs> peace out people <laughs>